Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and what we have for you today is our review of this Philips 2.1 soundbar. It is priced at about 17,000 rupees as of when we're recording this and it is a fairly good budget soundbar but we are going to dive deep into how it performs, what it's really good at and where we feel it lacks a little bit. But before we get into all that, do remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video. Now let's of course quickly get started with the build and design of the soundbar. And it has this geometric slanting design, which is essentially giving it a very angular look to the soundbar. It is a unique looking soundbar. And when you look at it from the side or from the back, you might think that it's gonna tip over, but that's not the case because it has two nice rubber feet holding it in place. And even though the design makes it look like it's leaning back, it's actually fairly centered. You have only uh, four drivers, which is uh, two drivers and two tweeters on each side, giving it a 2.1 setup, of course, with the soundbar. And it has this really nice grill finish up front, which kind of extends to the top of the soundbar. Uh, it does not have any top firing drivers to give you surround effects, but it does give that look, which means it kind of looks a little more expensive than it actually is, which is really nice. It does have this glossy strip up top, which kind of gets dirty uh, over a prolonged use you will see some fingerprints and dust on it so you'll have to clean it regularly but you do have touch sensitive buttons out here now i personally am not a fan of touch controls but that's a very personal preference you have the power source and volume controls that's about it now there is no display on the soundbar itself you just have led lights on the side it's red when uh, it's in standby mode and you have one LED light above the other to represent which source is on and of course those LEDs go ascending and descending to show volume up and volume down. It also has three modes uh, in the EQ mode which you can control with the remote control out here which is movie, music and news. So you'll have one red and one white LED flash for a bit to show you that it's in the movie preset, one red and two white for the music and one red and three white for the news preset. Now, it would have just been more convenient to have a display to tell you all that information, but with a minimal design, you can really get used to how the LEDs function to show you volume and the status of the soundbar. So overall, the design is actually pretty good. All the connectivity options are neatly hidden at the back out here, and there's enough space for you to connect multiple options you have the 3.5 mm port, you have an optical port, you have USB, you have HDMI and of course it has Bluetooth as well. The HDMI version on the soundbar is HDMI 1.4 and the Bluetooth version is Bluetooth 4.2. Moving over to the subwoofer, it is very minimalistic in its design. If you've kept it in one corner of your room, someone could mistake it for a coffee table in a corner and that's okay because you really don't want people drawing attention to it. It has a side firing driver and the duct at the back. And last but not least, we have this remote control, which is inspired by the slanting design of the soundbar itself. It also has this kind of an angular design. It's a little too sharp on the edges. It might just poke you a little bit, but that's again a design choice. It, I wasn't really too bothered by it. What I was bothered with is the choice of battery. Now it has a three volt, the little round battery that you get. It does not have double A's like you would expect. So you may want to keep one in spare in case the battery dies and you want to control some of the more functions apart from what's available physically. Now, speaking of the rest of the remote control, it has some really nice clicky rubbery buttons. The build of the remote control is quite premium. It's a lot more premium than the Yamaha YAS209 remote, which is twice as expensive as this soundbar. So it has a pretty nice remote control with a nice rubberized finish on each of the buttons giving it a nice clicky feel. So yes, for about 17,000 rupees, you are getting pretty much what you'd expect in terms of connectivity options and a fairly good build. Now, if you want to know how to set this up with your TV, we have a separate video in an unboxing and how to set up the soundbar, so you can definitely go check that out. Uh, when it comes to the scale, you'll notice that this soundbar actually fits quite perfectly below a 43-inch TV. In fact, even below a 50-inch and even 55-inch TV, it does command its own space. But yes, it is the perfect fit below a 43-inch TV. And I guess that's where this soundbar is targeted at those that have a 43 or a 50-inch entry-level TV or a mid-range TV, and they want to enhance the sound output of that TV. So if you have a TV from, let's say, OnePlus or Xiaomi or Redmi or one of the other budget TV manufacturers in India, then you know that the sound output from those TVs just misses the punch when it comes to its overall performance, especially if you're watching a movie or playing a game. 
that is the problem that this soundbar aims to solve and that's what it's really good at. It's good at improving your audio experience from your current setup. So let's start with movies. Now, if you are going to watch an action movie uh, like Mission Impossible or if you are going to watch, let's say, a movie like Ready Player One, which has all these cars whizzing around at the 13 minute mark, jumping over ramps with King Kong destroying the city, you are going to feel the thump of the bass. We controlled the subwoofer levels and kept it at about 50 to 60 percent to get the most effective experience. We tested the soundbar in a 12 by 14 room and at about 70% volume of the sound bar, the sound filled the entire room. It was loud, it was clear. There were only two drawbacks of using the soundbar. The first one, which is more of me nitpicking than anything else, is the channel shift. Now, if you have those cars jumping from the left to the right of the screen, you really aren't going to feel the channel separation on the soundbar very clearly. It is gonna come from in front of you. Now, I was sitting in the center sweet spot about 10 feet away from the soundbar. So if there was good channel separation, it's something that I would have noticed. But even in a movie like Mission Impossible, where you have Tom Cruise whizzing on his bike across the screen, there was little bit of channel separation and it's only noticeable when you're consciously looking for it. But what it's good at is literally giving you that immersive feeling of the background score, the noise of the vehicles, the gunshots that are happening, the thump that's needed in the bass, all that comes out really, really well. So yes, if you're looking to enhance that experience from your TV speakers, then when it comes to movies, this soundbar does really well. Before we get into music and gaming, let's quickly just show you a quick demo of what the audio of the soundbar sounds like. So now that you know what music sounds like on the soundbar, let's talk about music. Now, the first thing to note is that pressing the EQ button, you can switch between the movie music and news preset. And for us, switching between the movies and the music preset had very little difference in the overall output. Now, we played music while the soundbar was connected to the TV, via the YouTube app on the TV, and we also played the same songs from a smartphone connected via Bluetooth. And once again, the overall sound output from this soundbar is actually pretty good. Now, if you are someone that's an audiophile or you are someone that wants a 15 to 20,000 rupee set of bookshelves just to listen to music, then a pair of Mackie studio speakers would do you justice if that's what you're looking for because they would have slightly more natural sounding music. Out here, it's slightly biased towards the bass. So if you listen to, let's say, Mama Sita by the Black Eyed Peas or a little bit of The Weeknd or some Punjabi music, if that's what you're into, that has a little bit of bass naturally to it, you are gonna know that that bass is slightly more pronounced on this soundbar, which isn't a bad thing based on your taste. It's just that you have the option to control the level of the subwoofer out here. Going back to movies for a second, the only other downside to the soundbar is the fact that if you have a lot of mixed audio, like there's a background score, there's action happening, and there are two characters talking on screen, you are gonna miss a center channel out here because the dialogues are also going to come from the two channels which are here along with everything else. And there are times when the dialogues felt a little muted and I wish there was like a voice mode. Yes, you can press the EQ button and go into the news mode, which kind of enhances the volume, uh, the vocals a little bit, but it doesn't do justice to the rest of the audio around. However, if you're going to watch some TV shows like let's say Young Sheldon or Friends or any other form of a soap opera where there is a lot of conversation with minimal background score, then yes, the movie preset did do a good job of getting those vocals right. Even if someone has a gravelly or a bassy voice, it does come out really well. Once again, when it comes to gaming, it'll sound like I'm repeating myself, but we played games like Spider-Man Miles Morales, Ghost of Tsushima, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection, Horizon Forbidden West, and you get a very good sound output coming straight in front of you from below the TV. Now, in Ghost of Tsushima, if you have an archer who is off screen, who's kind of, you know, gonna shoot an arrow towards you, we've seen other sound bars at a slightly more expensive price point, of course, where the channel shift of that arrow coming towards you is really, really well felt, especially even from a 2.1 setup 
setup where you have the left to the right movement of the sound. Out here, everything is coming for, at you from in front of you from below your TV. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing like I've said before because what you are experiencing with your 43 or 50 inch budget TV is maybe slightly tinny sounding speakers where you don't have the bass. You may hear the vocals, but there will be loss of the background score. Those are the problems that this soundbar is trying to solve and it actually does all of this really, really well. So in conclusion, is this the right soundbar for you? Well, like I said in the beginning, it is catering to the need of those who have a really nice budget TV where you're happy with the panel, but you aren't really happy with the sound output, or you just want to add that extra bit of thumb to it. At 17,000 rupees, considering the price point, the only con, like I said, of this soundbar is the fact that you will not feel a great amount of channel separation. And in some cases, especially where there is high octave action happening in a movie, some of the dialogues may be lost. But its overall output in terms of the highs, in terms of the bass, in terms of just the overall sound quality will definitely be an upgrade for your television system. But then again, this is priced at 17,000 rupees. And for a mere 3,000 rupees more, you can also consider the Sony HT-S20R, which is a 5.1 soundbar setup. Now, granted, that does not come with a wireless subwoofer like this one, and all the connectivity options out there, even though they're the same, are at the back of the subwoofer, which means that for the rare satellite speakers, you are gonna have to run the wires through your room all the way to the subwoofer, limiting your positioning opportunities when it comes to cable management. But that's the compromise you are going to do for a budget 5.1 setup. But if you don't want the surround experience and you just want to enhance your uh, experience of watching movies, playing games, and of course some music, then you can definitely consider the Philips. We haven't reviewed a lot of soundbars in the 15 to 20,000 rupee price range, but of the ones that we've reviewed, the Philips and the Sony definitely stand out and based on your needs, you should consider one of them. So there you have it guys, that was our review of this Philips 2.1 soundbar. As always, you can let us know what you thought of this review in the comment section below. And for more from the world of technology, you can subscribe to the channel. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now.